Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do a pen and ink of a poppy, um, and then we're going to do a watercolor wash over it. And this is the example that I have. I did this with my adult watercolor class this week in honor of Veterans Day, and I thought it would be just a nice, um, nice tutorial to put up for you guys. We're going to use Da Vinci paints because uh, somebody had asked for a review on those. I happen to have some, and I had actually refilled my Cotman Sketcher box with some Da Vinci color, so I think the uh, uh, the crimson and the um, uh, the phthalo blue were both Da Vinci in here, so I figured uh, plus common colors, so I would use that and I uh, get to see how those work as well. So we're going to start off by going right in with a pen. You could go ahead and sketch with pencil first if you prefer, but I'm just going to go right in the, with the pen and I'm going to make a, uh, a circle or kind of like a wonky oval for the center of my uh, poppy and then I'm going to very lightly tap a ring around that and then um, on this ring, I'm just going to kind of doodle little circles, okay? Because there's like these little, they're, I don't know if they're little stamens or what. They're just these little, um, oh, you know, things with the pollen, I guess. And then we've got the little lines to connect them to the center, just like that. I think this flower is going to end up a little bit bigger than that one, but that's all right. You'll get the gist. Put a little dot in the center of that circle in the middle and then just draw some little pie slices. Basically just little lines up to the outside, but see how it kind of looks like pie slices there? And now I am going to make some petals and I'm going to start by um, making a nice big one over here. Put another one next door. We'll put another one next to that. So I'm getting, I'm trying to space four around pretty well. Yeah, this is going to be way bigger than the one I sketched, but that's all right. It's, it's better for you to see the, uh, the bigger, bigger illustration, I think. And then, um, beyond my center on, uh, three out of the four of these petals, because I think that this would cover up the one on the back petal, we're going to just put some really compact together dark lines uh, just to get that kind of those kind of dark patches that are in the center of a poppy and really give that poppy um, that poppyish look here I've got an overturned petal that I want to sketch in there and then from the edges of my um, my petals I'm dragging in some little uh, lines because poppies kind of have that crepey texture so I want to get that in there. And plus this is going to give me a little bit of shadow and kind of give me some ideas of where I'm going to want my darker colors. I'm just using a fine tip Sharpie. You could use a Micron. Any sort of waterproof pen is going to be fine because we are going to be watercoloring over this. And then I just wanted to sneak in another little petal over here. And then we're going to get another one in back here. And just make sure your petals have a nice um, edge to them. I like to go really light when I begin and then go in and connect and darken up my edges after I've gotten a good idea of what else I'm going to put in there. And uh, you can put some more of those shading streaks, texture streaks on those back petals as well. I'm trying to mo keep moving my hand so I'm not blocking your view. Hopefully it's I'm successful. Okay, and then... Um, I am going to very uh, choppily kind of just make the stem, but I'm kind of keeping dotty lines because um, I'm going to work other things around here and I just don't want to, um, I don't want to fill it in too much if I decide I need to put something in front of it. Uh, I am going to put this little bud over here, so I'm just kind of uh, tapping out this kind of almond shape and then doing the same for the stem because I'm going to get those hairs on there but I don't want to commit to that too much. If you sketch this with a pencil first you wouldn't really have to worry about it too much. I'm going to put in um, I'm going to put in a leaf right there being a little more daring with my leaf. I want to put another one I think going over this way I want those edges, I mean they're they're jagged, but I want them to be solid. And I do like this little um I actually think I'll do a different type of bud and maybe put it down here to make it match a little bit better. I'm doing just kind of like a uh 
roughly oval. I'm gonna bring those shapes into the center and then I'm gonna give it this like kind of bulbous shape here. I don't want to draw exactly the way my other one was. I, I like to have things a little bit different. I think it's fun to change things up a little bit. So I'm just gonna drag up some kind of like how a pumpkin or a Chinese lantern has that those ribs. I'm putting those in like that and then I can also do some more shading. You could do as much or as little of the hatching um, as you like. The more work you put in with the hatching, the less work you have to do with watercolors. So uh, that is something to consider. There are other waterproof pens on the market too. I do want to let you know because um, I was actually in an office supply store. I saw actually it was Martin's and they had bought out this big, which is a surplus store we have in Maine. And they had bought out a big um, office supply company and this pack of 12 waterproof gel pens and they were you know 50% of what they were selling the uh, big box stores would have been selling them for so I decided to take a take a chance on them and they are waterproof but you do have to heat set them or give them plenty of time to dry or they will run on you when you go and do a watercolor wash I found I'm just adding those little furs to the uh, to my little bud here and I think that's that's pretty that's pretty much all we need to go in with our pen and ink. Of course, if you want to put more leaves, go ahead. If you want to put um, different buds, go ahead and do that too. Completely up to you. I'm thinking that maybe from this angle, I would be able to see just a little bit of that black on that petal. So I'm putting that in. And uh, just go ahead and add any of your extra details. Now we're going to mix some color now that we've got that sketched in. And I'm going to keep that just kind of in frame so you can see. I'm going to use the same colors. And i got to grab my brushes. I had just cleaned off my table, so I had moved my brushes, <laughs> and I had to go back and find them. Now, I need some sap green, but I don't have any from, from Da Vinci, so I'm going to make my own. So I'm going to go ahead and mix some. I'm going to take the, um, I'm using a warm yellow. You can use cad yellow, but this is actually R-Eyed yellow. I have R-Eyed yellow, phthalo blue, um, vermilion hue, PR-188, if you want to know the pigment, and, um, Alizarin Crimson, which is PV19 from Da Vinci. So I'm taking my yellow, and I have I haven't used these, and I set these out probably to dry about a month ago, and I haven't added any water to them, and they do release really well. I'm gonna add a little of that phthalo blue to it, and I think I'm gonna put a little touch of the vermilion in it just to make it a little more earthy. There we go. It gives us a nice sap green color. And I'm also just going to kind of put out little puddles of each color on their own. And I'll do that. I'm going to pause while I do that because I'm waiting for the furnace to shut off. Okay, the heater's off for now, so let's start painting. I'm going to begin by wetting one of the petals. Um, I'm going to start with this one right here. And I have a little too much water on my brush. I just want like an even sheen here. And what I really want to do is kind of let the... Um, the paint mix on the flower so I get a really nice pretty wash so I'm going right in with the um, R Ride Yellow PY97 if you're curious any warm yellow is fine uh, I'm gonna grab some of the Vermilion Hue PR188 I'm gonna fuzzy in there oh and um I, I've explained my palette before um, I have been putting my paints as I get them in now I've been putting them in um, half pans and full pans and magnets on the bottom and then I'll just take whatever metal tin I have handy and I'll take out the insert and just put them in there and I can work right from the um, the colors that way. It just works really well for me and then I can just take out the colors I want and not get confused. Um, it's really helpful for doing videos too so I can share with you what I'm using and not um, have to have a ton of colors out um, and keep it really simple. I'm going to do the same thing on this petal over here. Because the colors are so wet I want to let one petal dry before I go on to the next. So I'm just wetting this and I'm using a Strathmore greeting card, watercolor greeting card. I especially want this light edge up against this top of the petal because there's another one underneath that's going to be darker. Just let the colors flow. I find this, the Da Vinci paints have really good flow. I've had these for a long time. 
the real selling point for them for me was the fact that I could get them in 37 milliliter tubes and uh, for f refilling my palettes, refilling students' palettes. Um, they were very economical and high quality. I do believe that the American Journey line of paints is made by Da Vinci, is the same paint. Um, I've heard that from several sources, and um, I have no reason to disbelieve that. They're one, they're great paints. I've had, I mean, mine are, mine are older. Hopefully they haven't changed their formulation, but, um, but yeah, I'm very impressed with them. Um, so for the leaves, I will wet any big leaves, but I don't really feel like I need to wet like the stems or anything because they're pretty small but I'm gonna go in and do both of these leaves and I'm gonna go in with a sap green that, that I mixed which is the uh, Aride yellow phthalo blue and um, a smidgen of the vermilion hue which gives me a lovely earthy green color and I'm gonna just go in there and get kind of like the shadows and the base color and I'm also gonna put some yellow in on its own because I think that gives it like a brightness and like the, the paintbrush I'm using because I don't want to carry too much paint or water is a um, synthetic oh no it's not is a mimic Kalinsky it is synthetic but it's a mimic Kalinsky I thought I had a creative mark ebony splendor but um, so you don't need a brush that's super juicy for this and I will be doing some glazing so um, don't worry if you don't have exactly your colors adjusted the way you want them. I'm just adding a little bit of that uh, phthalo on its own into the shadows just to give it a little depth. Now while that's wet I'm going to skip over to this thing that looks kind of like a, uh, a bulb of garlic. I'm actually going to mix a little um, a little violet and take a little bit of the crimson and it's, it's a hue it's not the fugitive fady Fady Crimson. Mix it with a little bit of that. Now, because I'm using Thalo Blue, it's not going to give me a, a super vibrant purple, but that's what I want. I want a more muted color. Um, hmm, I'm just debating whether or not I want to wet that first. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to add some water to that. That's too bright. Okay, yeah, I should have wet that first because I'm just getting way too much color. Gonna add a little yellow to that. That's gonna that's gonna neutralize it, and a little red. It's kind of giving me that ochery color there. And I'm gonna grab a little green because that purple just got a little out of hand. <laughs> Have this give it more of like a seed pod. Oh, to seed look there it's a little bit nicer looking now I'm gonna take I'm also gonna need some of that purpley color a little fresher though I don't want any green in that I want this to be a little fresher I am NOT going to wet the area because I don't want too much water in there but I am gonna go in and put in these little um, this little area that kind of connects those little pollen things to the stamen or the center of the flower I guess it's kind of, those are the pistons maybe and that's a stamen. I don't remember. It's been so long since I was in since I was in a biology class. <laughs> Get a little bit more color up against those um, speckly dots because they would be casting a little bit of a shadow, I think. As would the center. And I, and since I didn't wet it first, it's not going to take that long to dry. Now, let's see. I'm going to dry this with a heat gun and then we're going to go back and finish the rest of the petals and stem. Okay, this is dry. You can see the color is a lot more true now. Um, so those two petals are going to be done just like those two. Uh, the two back ones though, I'm going to do one of those with you because um, the only difference is that I'm not going to re-wet the petal first. I'm going to go ahead and grab um, some of that crimson, make sure it's juicy enough. And I'm going to apply that dark color right up against the lighter petals in front because I want that to be a little bit darker and appear like it's behind and have a little dimension. So that's why I wanted to not wet the, the paper and just go right in there uh, with it on its own. I'm going to pick up some of that vermilion because it's a little bit warmer and I'm going to add that to the outside here. And I'm just going to pretty much let them blend where they meet. And I'm going to do that exact same thing for um, paint that petal just like I did that one. I'm going to do those two just like I did those two petals and then uh, we will return when that's dry to do our glazing. 
anytime you have an overturned petal, it's going to be a little bit lighter, like right there. So what I'm going to do is take some yellow, add a little bit of that vermilion to it, and I'm going to use that. I'm going to paint it right on here dry, and that's going to just give me kind of that a little bit more color there. Um, it's just going to give me that uh, lighter overturned look. Just uh, don't get too much water on there. You do want it light, but you don't want it to like blend in with what you have around. Now I want to do the center of the flower, um, the stamen and pistons. Those are going to be a very, very light green. So the phthalo blue, mostly yellow, just a smidgen of the phthalo blue. I'm going in and painting it um, on dry paper, wet on dry, because I it's not a very big space. So I'm just kind of tapping in that color. If it's too dark, grab a paper towel and blot it. My colors aren't going to be exactly the same because I did use a different palette, but I was just kind of keeping that handy so I can um, keep an eye on it. Now for the stem, I'm going to go in again with a light green color. I'm keeping the paper dry, and I'm just going to go in and, um, and paint that in. This paper is pretty well sized. So you do will tend to get a hard edge on things. Um, now I do want a little bit of a darker green to put in there um, and also probably some yellow on its own. So let me just grab some yellow, put that right kind of at the top where it'd be a little more highlighted. Along that stem too. And then I'm gonna grab a little phthalo with that dirty yellow brush and go and add some of that on the bottom of that uh, bud just to give it a little definition. Give a little shadow under the uh, poppy too. Well, it's kind of pretty on this one. Um, I painted the stem and the poppy was still wet and it seeped, the red ink seeped, red paint seeped down a little bit. I like that. That's kind of a signature watercolor look to me. Um, so I, I'd say don't be too fussy. Don't worry if you do have some color seeping because I think it's really nice. Now the flower petals are going to need some glazing. And um, for that, I'm going to use mostly the crimson. You could use some of the... Um, the vermilion as well, but I think the crimson does pretty well at this, and you can switch to a smaller brush if you want. Basically, I'm just kind of going in in the shadow areas and bringing in those uh, those shadowy darks or the more intense red. I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller. Why don't I, this is an ebony splendor. It's less juicy. I think it'll work a little bit better for this technique because it's got a nice fine point on it. And I'm just going to go in any place I think that it's kind of indented. I want, or like maybe a petal is kind of on top of another one. I want to get that shadow on the bottom petal. You can go ahead and do that. And just go around and do that on um, all of your petals. And then we'll do a little glazing on the leaves. Next to this underturned petal, you want it dark underneath because that's going to really give you that depth as well. So uh, see, this is a not a long process. Just uh, go through and add those shadows. And don't be shy, turn your paper around so that you can comfortably reach everything. It's so much easier if you can pull that stroke towards you. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go and do some glazing on the petal. And if you did, you could also do a little darker on that back um, leaf if you needed to. Uh, for the, the uh, flowers, we're gonna take phthalo blue and some yellow. Um, we just want it to be kind of dark. You can add a little bit of red to it if it's too vibrant. And then um, just go in there and add your shadows to that. You can add any veining in. You can knock down the color if it's too bright. Make the um, leaves a little different from the stems. And you can also tap in any of the little hairs on the poppy and that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I hope you try it for yourself. Um, and you can of course put as little or as much detail on this as you want. Like if you want to go over here, maybe add some, add some more detail onto that little seed pod you can. 
and of course you could always put some splatter on here either if you got a smudge on the background or you just decided that you wanted it darker another thing you could do if you wished you had more pen and ink like this is a larger petal a larger flower than that I can go in with my sharpie or shoppy as we say here in Maine and I can go and add more details like I've got I have darker lines here I think they just look darker because it's a smaller flower so you know you can go ahead and do that too if you prefer I want to thank you so much for watching if you like this tutorial share it with a friend sharing is caring give me a thumbs up and I'll leave a comment I love to hear them thanks for watching until next time happy crafting